Jason Statham was not once a superstar. Cult films Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch, directed by Guy Ritchie at first went unnoticed and Jason's talented viewers could not see them. And the actor went to a secondary role, where he failed miserably. But thanks to the transporter actor, was able to become one of the most famous actors in Hollywood. The fantastic thing about this franchise is that it was never at the box office and didn't bring the studios and producers a lot of money. Today, we would like to talk about this franchise and find out the secret of its success. The Transporter was invented by director Luke Besson and screenwriter Robert Mark Common. They liked the idea of the BMW commercials in which the driver played by Clive Owen carrying some vital customer in his car evading a chase. At that time, these videos quickly went viral. They were shot by famous directors like Guy Ritchie and David Fincher. Besson and Common decided that they should make a small movie based on them. An actor who could play a driver like that was chosen before the script was even written. Screenwriter Mark Common had seen the one with Jet Li and his attention was drawn to Jason. The screenwriter had in mind that the main character should be fierce. Jason did not refuse the offer, especially since they were not very many at the time. The actor was able to get his biggest fee of $750,000 for this role. Producers insisted that the actor was an engaged martial arts coach for three months to prepare for the role. The directors of the first part were just two people, Louis Letterier and Corey Yuen. For Louis, the transporter was his debut, while Corey had previously worked in numerous films with such international celebrities as Jackie Chan, Jet Li and Van Damme. Yuen was in charge of directing the fights and letterier of the races and other sequences. The film had big problems in post-production. The transporter was initially supposed to be released with an adult rating, but after some unsuccessful test screenings, the producers decided to expand the film's audience to teenagers. The film had to be remounted. The fight scenes of some of the episodes. Fighting scenes and some episodes had to be removed from the film as a whole the tape after. Studio intervention was reduced by 15 minutes. In cinemas the action film arrived at the end of 2002. 20th Century Studios invested another $20 million in advertising. It didn't affect the result and the transporter only managed to gross $43 million at the worldwide box office. A sequel that was in Luke Besson's plans was immediately cancelled. All that changed a few months later when the film was released on video and DVD. The film was a big hit, and from those sales alone, the studio made more money than all the worldwide box office receipts. Filming of the second part has decided to move to the USA so that American audiences film caused more interest. There has been a reshuffle in the director's chair. Louis Letterier was now working alone, relative to the first film. The budget of the second part of the movie rose by 10 million, and the film attracted companies who wanted to see their logos on the screen. The product placement was everywhere, and Audi they suffered a lot. One of the cars provided by the car company for the filming of the first. The car wouldn't start on the first day, and even the called masters couldn't fix it. As a result, this ferry car was wrecked in the film. Jason refused to understudies and took part in almost all the dangerous episodes of the film. He would later say that he was foolish in those years and thought that if you, if you don't do everything yourself, you're not a cool guy. As a result of these scenes, several times on the set almost became disabled and he was fortunate that the injuries were not serious. The second film has already taken first at the box office displacing 40-year-old Virgin. At the end of the world box office, the movie at 32 million grossed $85 million. The studio immediately announced the launch of the production of third films. However, unlike the second part of the third film, budget slightly decreased to $30 million. Director Louis Letterier's career went up after the first two films and he was invited to shoot The Incredible Hulk, and Luke Besson called director Olivier Megaton to the project. The performer of the central female role Natalia Rudikova is associated with several stories. According to one version, she was seen in a cafe by an agent of Luke Besson, 
According to another version of the Besson got acquainted with it during a walk through New York after which he invited her to the central role. In general, then the girl's career is almost immediately and ended after the release of Transporter 3. The new director wanted to change the style of Transporter. He said he wanted to do something in between Bond and Die Hard. The film was released in 2008 and in theaters made even better than the first two films at 30 million budget in cinemas to collect 109 million. However, box office receipts specifically in America were very much reduced. Jason Statham originally signed on for the trilogy and his royalties if insignificant. And the fourth part was announced by the producers and Jason was to return to his role. And the film was to hit the big screens in 2011. The actor himself considers the second part of the franchise the most successful and the third part the weakest. Maybe it affected the actor and the request for a fee of $11 million for filming the fourth part. The actor's career was already at its peak, and he had already signed a contract for the project mechanic with a considerable fee. Luke Besson decided to close the project because the franchise was not bringing in huge money. Instead of the film, a series was released. It premiered in 2012. The project got off to a bad start but he was given a chance and released a second season which failed miserably and then closed. Then the creators decided to return to the big screens. And the project was called The Transporter Refueled Luck Besson had already created a new film collaborating with a Chinese company. Plans have been announced for a new trilogy about a young transporter that would be different from the Statham films. And the sequel was supposed to be filmed in Hong Kong. This time, it was directed by Camille de Lamar, who had previously directed Brick Mansions with Paul Walker. They signed Ed Scrain, who left Game of Thrones for the lead role. The film was originally budgeted at $25 million, but the picture had some complications in post-production. At test screenings, no one liked the new transporter, and they tried to fix the film. But cardinally, they could not change anything. The start at the USA box office was not as awful as you'd expect. Though it is the worst film in the franchise. It took the end of the week in fourth place, but it was in 19th place a week later. In the USA the film failed mightily, even with its very modest budget but what's worse at the Chinese box office, which the picture is very much expected to collect only 18 million. Total box office receipts for the new movie suggest that the studio could profit given that the film grossed $72 million. Failures in the USA and China finally convinced the studio of the lack of perspective all plans were quickly curtailed. And so far, a sequel has not been made. Although periodically there are rumors that the studio wants to make a sequel starring Jason Statham, his career is going too well now to seriously think about Transporter, so it is unlikely that Frank Martin will sit behind the wheel in the coming years.